All right, good morning. I've been asked to bring a 20-minute message, so I will try to abide by the rule of my pastor. I want you to take your Bibles and go to Psalm chapter 91, please. The 91st Psalm. About four weeks ago, I had an inmate clerk that works for me at the prison that came to me and asked me my thoughts about this upcoming virus. And so we chit-chatted for a little while in, the, in my office, and so he said, well, he said, can I quote some scripture to you that I, that I think that you might need to consider? I said, sure. So I opened my Bible to the 91st Psalm, and that inmate sat there in my office and quoted every word of the 91st Psalm verbatim. So you know if an inmate in a prison can learn scripture, so can we. But that day it really spurred my thinking about this because I had never done a lot of study. Many years ago before I moved to Florida, I outlined all 150 of the Psalms just for a, a personal study time. And so I pulled my file out and got to looking and realized that I did not research this Psalm the way that I should have. So in light of everything that's going on in our country and in our church and in our lives right now, we're going to take the 91st Psalm and look at it this morning with some hope of understanding that God knows all about the situations that we're faced with. In my outline of 91st Psalm, I found that we, we see the protection for God's people. We see the person that's doing the, the securing is God Almighty. The prerequisite for this protection is abiding in Him and under His submissive hand. Then we see His passion for this protection because he loves us without any question whatsoever. And then we see the promises given to us from the scripture. And so this morning as we look at this passage of scripture, we're just going to read and make comment about the verses and then I'll go back and finish up uh, some thoughts at the end of, the, of the, the, the tape this morning. The Bible very plainly says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of of the Almighty. So as we look at that verse, let's pray this morning and ask God to give us wisdom. Father, I come to you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. I thank you for the scriptures. I thank you, Lord, for the problems and the troubles that you allow us to go through in our life because we realize that when we go through problems and struggles, it's a growth period in our life. I pray, God, for those that are listening this morning who may have fear, who may have doubt, who may be real concerned about the situation that we're going through as a nation right now. I pray, God, you'll give us some inner peace from the truth that we look at from the Bible this morning, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. In those first two verses right there, we find something quite interesting. We see four names of God Almighty given to us. First of all, He's called the Most High. He is called the Almighty. He is called the Lord in verse 2, and He's called my God in verse number 2. And so there we find out the personalities of God. The Most High in the Hebrew is Elyon, which is the one who gives us stability. Uh, we find the Almighty God is the Hebrew word Shad El Shaddai. Uh, in verse 2, the Lord is Yahweh. Of course, we understand who that is according to the Scripture. And then he says, My God, which is a word for Elohim, which is a personal God to each of us. And so this morning, as we're facing these fears that we look at in our world, we understand that God still understands everything that's going on right now. He allows things to come into our country because we have turned our back on Him. He is trying to get the preeminence in all things that we, we have in our life. And yet people will still uh, believe fake news more than they will believe the Word of God. And so this morning we need to put ourselves as dwellers in the secret place of the Most High. And we should abide or continue to live under the shadow of the Almighty. And then we can say to our Lord, who is our Master, you, Lord, are my refuge, and you are my fortress. You are my God, in you will I trust. And so it's a choice that we have. Notice he says, Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. 
And so here we are dealing with a pestilence in our country right now and around the world that we have never seen in our lifetime. In my 73 years of life on this earth, I've never seen anything that has shaken up our country like this has. I mean, we've been through the Vietnam conflict in my life. We've been through 9-11 in my life. We have seen uh, all kinds of viruses go through and all kinds of flus that have uh, taken lives of people. But never has anything like this shut down our country uh, as this pestilence seems to have control over our life. And notice the promise in verse 4. He said, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. Why? Because his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. And so this morning, as we think about God and who, uh, who he is, we find out the names of God uh, was the foundation of our faith. Then secondly, I want us to look at the foes of our faith. Look at verse number 3. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. And so the devil himself is trying to cause fear uh, in our lives as God's people, causing us to doubt the word of God, causing us to try uh, to look to mankind for the answers to life's problems and situations. But we find out that that's only a trap. It's just a snare because fear is a snare to people because the Bible very plainly tells us that Almighty God has rescued us from the fatal plague. We are protected by God Almighty. We can fully trust our God and His promises according to the Word of God. So there we see the foundation of our faith is God Almighty. We see the foes of the faith is the Word of God uh, telling us that Satan uses these tricks uh, to, to snare us and to cause us to doubt the Word of God. And then third thing we find in verse number four is the fruits of the faith. Notice he says, under the wings of God. He says, we are covered. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. So here he uses the illustration of an eagle taking care of the baby eaglets uh, as she teaches them how to fly and how to protect them from the elements. And she puts them under her wings to protect her. So we find out here that the armor is God's faithfulness to us. Notice, please, in verse number 5, he said, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Today we're having fears everywhere. You can get up in the middle of the night and turn on the news, and they're still broadcasting the same thing that they were talking about in the afternoon the day prior. Because the world only understands fear. But we need to understand that we have been rescued from our terror and our danger and our evil that's in our life. The fear of the wicked and their lies is being dealt with. Look at verse 6. He says, Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. So understand the attacks of the devil will be all around us in every, every area of our life. As he drove over here this morning to the church house, uh, you can see businesses closed down. You can see uh, less traffic on the road. Uh, we find out that people are just uh, staying in their homes and, and their jobs have been shut down. And fortunately, my job has still been open to me because if there's any time that an inmate needs a chaplain, it would be during these days of fear because this week, last week alone, we've had two attempted suicides that I've had to deal with with inmates who get tired of being locked up. Not only are they locked up in prison, but they're locked up in the dormitory. They have no chapel services. They have no programs to go to. The only thing they're allowed to do is go out in the sunshine on the rec field and take some exercise and put them right back in the, in the dormitory. And then they allow them to go eat their meals and bring them right back and lock them up again. So there's no hope uh, for these men. And so I've had a good opportunity to deal with a lot of men who have this fear that the devil is trying to throw out. So notice, he says, the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. And then notice the warning in verse 7. The Bible says, a thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Death is around us in every area. Uh, they are saying on the, on, the, on the broadcast this morning, on the news, that this will be one of the worst weeks in this entire situation that we're facing. They're expecting more people to die this week in our nation 
than any other time uh, because of a pestilence right here. And so they're trying to put fear in us. But the Bible says the pestilence that walketh in darkness and the destruction that wasteth at noonday is a picture of death. And thousands shall fall and ten thousand at thy right hand. But the Bible says, but it shall not come nigh thee. Now the inmate that I talked about in the beginning of this is an illustration. is one of these claim it and believe it sort of guys. He's tied up in the Pentecostal movement. And he says that he's already claimed the blood of Jesus Christ upon him. And there's nothing going to happen to him because of the Bible verse that's given right here. I said, well, you know what? That might be a good way to live, but is it a good way to die? I said, what's going to happen if you do pass on? Then where's all this doctrine come from? Because it's appointed unto men once to die. And after that, the judgment because of the sin nature that we have. And so I was over in the infirmary visiting some sick men the other day. And I happened to see this particular inmate. And I said, what are you doing here? And he said, well, they moved me back over here to work in the infirmary around these guys that are dying. I said, really, the other day you told me that you had no fear about this. And he said, well, I'm kind of rethinking this right now because I'm not really sure about all that's going on. I said, well, the promises of God are still sure, but if it's appointed unto you to die because of a virus or because of a flu bug or because of whatever, I said, you're just as near eternity and one heart attack away than you are with the, with the, with the flu bug. And so understand that death is all around us every day. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. So verse, verse number 8 tells us that God is going to bring judgment upon those that have turned against the Lord God. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. So there we find a great picture of salvation in verse number 9. We have made the Lord, which is our refuge, and the Lord is the Most High God. Uh, that we talked about there in verse number one to prove who Jesus Christ is, is God in the flesh. He said, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee. There we have the doctrine of eternal security there. God is going to care for us uh, in our life. Uh, that doesn't mean that we're not going to have physical death to face because there's only two ways out of this world, either by the rapture or the soon coming of Jesus Christ or uh, physical death that we know about. But he says, Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. So there we have the word plague used right there along with pestilence and noisome pestilence and the snare that talked about in verse number 3 again. So Moses is writing this particular psalm to the people of God that are getting ready to go into a battle, and he's giving them hope that they will be successful and that God will be with them. And he uses these illustrations. He said, Shall any plague, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. So understand that God's angels there are created beings to do his work and his bidding and his ministry to us and so they watches over us no matter what the situation may be around us God still has a protecting hand upon his people so we are protected verse number 12 they shall bear thee up in their hands lest thou dash thy foot against a stone so here's a verse that was quoted uh, by Satan himself to our Lord Jesus over in the New Testament there he took that that particular verse out of there and used it uh, against our Lord as he doubted his deity and his sonship. And so we find out here uh, in these particular verses, we see the friends of faith are, are, are the angels at God. What do they do? They guard us and they guide us. And so the fruits of our faith were under the wings of God. The friends of the faith are the angelic beings that God has created for our protection. And then we see the fellowship of faith. There's an intimacy there. Uh, between us and the Lord. Notice in verse 13, Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. So here he gives the illustration of victory over our enemies. Because, verse 14, He has set His love upon me, therefore will I deliver Him. I will set Him on high because He hath known my name. Isn't that a wonderful verse to think about that God Almighty, the creator of everything that we know of, 
uh, has our names uh, in him. He knows exactly who we are and where we are. Even the very hairs of our head are all numbered. He knows that we're frail people. He knows that we're going to have fears. He knows that we're going to have times in our life whereby that we're going to be uh, doubtful many times and he wants to encourage us all the time because he hath known my name. The Bible says, He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Notice that little statement right there. He is with us in our trouble. He will not necessarily deliver us from all troubles as the whole world is going through, but he will be with us in this particular time in our life. So notice he says he's going to deliver us and will honor us because we belong to God. We are his children. And then the promise in verse 16 is a great verse. He says, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. So there God says, I'm going to be with you all the days of your life. And so there we see the fellowship of faith is that intimacy between uh, a believer and his Lord. It's a mutual love. It's to and from uh, evil uh, that he's with us there. What a fellowship, what a joy divine leaning on the everlasting arms, that old song says. So there we're talked about in verse 15 of communication through prayer. He says, you call and I'm going to answer because prayer is asking, A-S-K, ask and seek and knock. When we ask and seek and we knock, God hears our prayers. Many times the answer is yes, sometimes the answer is no, and many, many times our prayers are answered with the word wait. So we just have to live every day in the fear and the admonition of our Lord and look forward to that long life of honor that one day we will be with him because he will satisfy his people with eternal life. So why can we trust him and be encouraged as we face these dilemmas? The fact is the person that we trust in is God and not men. The president has some good ideas and he's looking out for us as a country, but he's not the answer. God is the answer. Thank God that we can pray. Thank God that he's encouraging us to pray and to pray for our leadership and the things that's going on right now. So the person that we trust in is God. The prerequisite to his abiding in him uh, as to him giving us the desires of our heart as we pray. The passion that God shows his children is because he loves us with an ever-ending, never-ending love. And the promises that we find throughout the Psalms and the Bible. We need to read the Bible. We need to believe the Bible. We need to trust the Bible. We need to apply the Bible to our life. We see God's protection of his people. We see the confidence that we can have in him in this passage of Scripture. Even though we face dangers, God is still in control. The examples of God's protection are shown to us in our life and the future that we have is a, is a perfect picture of what God is going to do in our life. And so this is the best hiding place for believers. It's under the wings of the Almighty God. As we live in times of trial and terror and temptation, we still need to give God the glory and give Him the preeminence in our life and allow Him to be in control of our life. The theme of this particular psalm is living under God's everlasting arms. We see the Most High as possession. We see God Almighty as the provision. We see the Lord as the promise giver. And we see the Creator as the power that gets us through these situations in our life. Earth is under the siege of Satan right now. It's called the Age of Terror. There's terrorists everywhere, and this is just another proof that God is taking, uh, taking care of His people in this because Jesus said before he comes that there will be pestilence and earthquakes and darkness and defeat and disease and destruction and fear and floods and fires. The fact is God does not keep us from the terrors, but he keeps us in these terrors. So, my friend, take heart, step up, stand tall, stay true, and stay at it because we are on the winning side and the peace that passes all understanding is a promise of God. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the promises of Psalm 91. I pray, Lord, today that you would speak to our hearts and take away these fears that we have. I pray, God, as we deal with our family and our friends and our neighbors, that they will see the peace of God in our life. Help us, Lord, not to give in to the temptation of fear and to give in and succumb to the wiles of the devil. I pray, God, for our church family, 
Pray, Lord, for our pastor and his staff. Pray, God, for our deacons as they lead us to show us the things that we need to do as a church. Help, Lord, to uh, be with the men that make these programs possible. Thank you for modern technology that the world can hear the message of hope and peace that we have. And thank you for the confidence that we have in Jesus Christ. Thank you for salvation by grace through faith. Thank you, Lord, it's not by our works of righteousness which we have done, but according to your mercy that you save us. And so I pray, God, for anyone that's looking into their future right now with fear. I pray, God, that they would understand the gospel of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ during this Easter season. The world's thinking about all the religious things. I pray, God, that they would understand that we celebrate the, the risen Savior every time that we meet together. So, God, please use us to be a witness and a testimony and a light in this dark world, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, amen.